on the internet. Uh, okay, so for our infographics, uh, we're going to add a compass rose. This is one version. If you do a Google image search for compass rose, you can see there are many versions of compass roses and, uh, and uh, calzone. I don't know what that is, um, <laughs> but I have several oh, there's like there's egg and maybe basil, cheese and bread. That's uh, great, uh, but that's not where we're making. We're making uh, <laughs> compass roses, which uh, compared to that is less interesting, mm -hmm. but we're still doing it. So um, this is a relatively simple thing to make, uh, and we can do it here uh, in probably under five minutes or so. Uh, so I will delete all of my progress, and we will start over. Uh, we're going to start with a cylinder. And this cylinder is going to first be called compass, if I spell it properly. There we go. Uh, this compass is going to have the default radius of 1 is fine. The height uh, does not need to be that tall. Let's make it like 0.2 seems good. Subdivisions, this one's important, 16 will give us what we want. Uh, subdivisions along the cap and uh, height can all stay at 1. So that's, the, that's our kind of uh, default primitive base. Uh, I'm also going to translate this up 0.1 so that it sits on the grid floor, just because I prefer it that way. Now, to actually make this compass rose, I'm going to go into edge mode, and I'm going to select the vertical edge in each of the four cardinal directions. All right, so these four edges, um, let's see if we can, can't really see in this view, but I selected the vertical edge here, 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 and here, right? North, south, east, and west. This will become very apparent here in a second because the next step is to scale. And I just want to scale along the x and the z axis, so I'm going to grab this um, plane here on the scale widget, and I will scale it out to about there. All right, so now we have established our cardinal directions, um, which is fine for some compasses, but other compasses have the intermediary uh, directions. I don't know what those are called. Um, if, if north, south, east, and west is cardinal, I don't know what the other one is. Uh, so the other directions, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to select the middle ones, and we're just going to scale those out in the same direction to about there, whatever looks good. Obviously, it should be shorter than the, the main ones because this is uh, they are the secondary directions. All right. Uh, so we've got our general form established. Now we just want to add some contouring to make this a little bit more interesting. So we're going to select that center vertex and move it up. All right, and now we have this kind of faceting that you saw with this 2D shading, right? So that's what that, just pulling up just that center vertex gives us that. And then I want to select all of these top, come on all these top vertices at the corners. Actually, all of them except for the center one, right? So I'm going to go, whoa, everything froze. Uh, I'll just go to the side view. I'm just going to click and drag to select everything uh, on this top edge except for this middle vertices, vertex. OK, so you can see what I have selected and what I don't. Uh, and I'm going to move those down to almost the point. So now we're really exaggerating that, that faceting. OK, that looks good. Now, if we just render this, uh, it doesn't look great. Because there's, uh, there's n not enough geometry to, to give a nice even shading. Also, if I were to hit 3 on the number pad, uh, everything would just go south. No pun intended. Uh, see, that's that's awful. So, what we're going to do is we're going to bevel all of the edges. So I'm going to right click, go to edge mode, double click, 
Uh, it doesn't click. Okay, so I'll just drag it across. Now I got all the edges. Shift right click and bevel edge is right here. We haven't really used this. Um, it's like adding control loops. Um, but what it does is it actually adds a bunch of little triangles um, at like at the points. It's great for this instance where we've got a kind of a random irregular shape. Um, but it does things like here at the center, we've got this end gone. So I don't like to use bevel because it, it can make adding future, you know, adjustments to the geometry kind of tricky, but it's really great right now. So we'll use it. Um, so I add the bevel and now when I hit three on the number pad, we keep a nice crease. Uh, and there is our compass rose. You know, the, the center here is Oh, it's so bad. Um, so what I'm going to do, let's see if we can sort this out in an easy way. I'm going to select this face, and I'm going to extrude it, and then just scale it down. Oops. Well, I just want to scale it along the X and the Z, scale it in a little bit more. And that that definitely helps. There we go. Right, that basically added a control loop to the, that center point. Um, so now we've got that main shape established. Uh, if we want to further embellish this, there's a couple other easy things that we can do. We can add a polygon uh, primitive, a pipe. All right, so this, uh, this pipe, we can set the subdivisions down to something really simple like eight. Uh, the height can be pretty small, and then we'll adjust the radius, so it's something like that, and the thickness, maybe something like that, bring that radius down a little bit. Alright, so now we've got that dimension of the compass rose and we can kind of snap things together. So if we turn on vertex snapping, move our pivot point down to the bottom of our object, and then snap this to the top here. Now obviously we would want to add some control loops or creasing here <coughs> uh, to keep that nice and sharp. So. Maybe I'll just add a couple of control loops here real quick. Oops, that'll work. Well, maybe one more in there. Let's see, I want to add this last one along that vertical. There we go. So now when I smooth it out, it's a nice even disc. And then the very last thing that you need to add for a compass is you need to distinguish which way is north. And so this is actually a really nice segue for the next part of this, which is going to be adding text labels. Um, we want to add a letter. And there's a very easy way to do that in Maya. Go to Create and Type. So create type, and by default, it gives you this obnoxiously large 3D type. Uh, but it's something to work with that we can make what we need it to be. Uh, so you create the type. Uh, in your attribute editor, we have this type tab. And this is where we can, uh, we'll call it north. And then in this 3D type field, this is where you put the text that you want it to say. So in our case, it's just a capital M is all we want. We've got some font options with helpful previews so we know what it's going to look like. Uh, and we will find, I don't know, what looks like a fancy, a semi-fancy. Uh, Text Apple Chancery, that looks great. So there's that will be our north. 
we've got our font size options so we can definitely bring this down let's say I don't know maybe three three looks like a good size we can always scale it later uh, and then in this uh, type tab we've got the text tab which is what we just adjusted we also have generator which we don't need to worry about uh, we have geometry, which is what we do need to worry about. And we've got some options here. So I'm going to zoom in here on this letter. We have curve resolution, and that is how many edge loops it uses to define curves. So we can bring it all the way down, and you can see that gets simpler and blockier, or all the way up and it gets super smooth, but a ton of geometry. So uh, four is a nice even place. We could probably even go with three because this is going to be a, a more minor element. Uh, and then we've got uh, distance we don't really need to worry about. Put it back to the default. Uh, extrusion section is the next big thing. So we do want to enable extrusion. If we don't, then it's just a flat, uh, just a flat plane, basically. So I do want to enable extrusion. We've got some profiles, uh, which if you turn on an offset, and select a profile, you can see it's kind of not really working well, but you can uh, create these uh, basically a shape or a profile to the bevel, or, or excuse me, to the extrusion. Um, not going to worry about that. But you've also got extrude distance, so we can bring that way down and extrude subdivisions or divisions. Uh, we don't need that many. I think three will be fine. Actually, we can even go down to two, I think. And that should be fine. All right, so now we've got our letter. Uh, if we wanted to bevel this letter as well, we can do that. So in the bevel profile, uh, well, we can first we have to enable the bevel. Click that, and by default, it's awful. Uh, we just need to turn down the bevel distance and the bevel offset. There we go. So it's it works in very small, you know, at this scale, it, it's it's very small numbers. But you'll see what it's doing, right? It's giving a nice kind of rounded look to those corner corners, and then we can adjust the bevel divisions. A three will be plenty for this. All right, and then once you have it, all you have to do is move it into place. And I've got snapping still on, so um, I'm going to rotate it along the x-axis 90 degrees. Oops, negative 90 actually. And then, oh, I do want to go back into the attribute editor real quick and in text. I want to center it, and then I just move it up. And let's make sure that is sitting on the floor, on the grid floor. Turn on grid snapping, move it vertically. There we go. And there is our lovely compass rose.